So SAG-AFTRA, of course, the Screen Actors Guild and Alliance of Film, Television, Radio Actors, I think, right? Um, the, the Actors Union is moving forward to try to bring intimacy coordinators into their fold. Um, you know, under their kind of union dur- jurisdiction. So they filed a petition with the Na- National Labor Relations Board um, and they, you know, called this, quote, a natural evolution of the union's commitment to help build a stable and safe future for our members, end quote. I also have a more extended quote here from sag after President Fran Drescher, aka The Nanny, if you can believe it, uh, saying, quote, I, maybe I should do this quote in The Nanny voice. Uh, working in scene, no, I'm not going to do it. Working, quote, working in scenes involving nudity or physical intimacy is some of the most vulnerable work an actor can do. Intimacy coordinators not only provide assistance in navigating these scenes, but they also create a safety net for performers ensuring consent and protection throughout the entire process. Shifting the power imbalance that has been ingrained over a century is challenging but important work. Work that could be done even more effectively with the backing of a union. Intimacy coordinators have our backs on set, and now it's our turn to have theirs, end quote. So you might be hearing me say this, you might have no idea what I'm even talking about. What is an intimacy coordinator? Um, so it is a position for film production. It's also used like on stage as well uh, for theatrical productions, but it's a role that emerged following um, Hollywood's reckoning with sexual harassment and violence in in the industry, right? Because before, before the Me Too era, there were no protocols for filming sex scenes, um, or at least standardized protocols, right? You know, how much practice should there be? Who should be on set during the filming? And ultimately, actors were put into uncomfortable and compromising positions all the time. Like, it just became standard. Not because people were trying to be evil, but just they just weren't thinking. They just weren't being considerate of the actor in the vulnerable position that they were going to be in performing this scene. After Me Too, you couldn't play fast and loose with these things anymore. Um, even if it wasn't really motivated, it wasn't motivated for the right reasons. It was more out of self-preservation. No one wanted to be the next Harvey Weinstein or get canceled. So, you know, it almost, and I did a video about this, how Hollywood films have become more sexless over like the past 10 or 15 years. Um, so in a lot of ways we went the other extreme where it's like, okay, instead of figuring out a healthy way to go about doing these scenes, we're just going to not do any of them. Right? So the idea of the intimacy coordinator is it helps provide like a happy middle ground. Um, you know, so, so what they do is they choreograph scenes or work with the actors on scenes involving intimacy or, or nudity. Um, even if it's as simple as just working with the actors to establish some ground rules, right? Um, you know, like where should I touch you? What's, what's fair game? What, what is, what are we going to say is not allowed for the scene, right? Just literally having a conversation about it, um, can can just do wonders, right? And Deadline notes that many studios already demand, like they, they, a lot of studios have already mandated that if you're gonna have a scene like this, you need to have an intimacy coordinator, which is good, but again, it's not standardized. Um, and it's, it's, um, it's really interesting because a lot of people are um, not quite against it, but just don't feel compelled to do it. And I'm gonna tell a little personal story. I actually got in trouble for this. So I'm not gonna give any specifics because I don't wanna, you know, call anyone specifically out, but if you know, you know. So I used to work at a at a nonprofit and I was like their video production manager. And uh, one of my, like my first week there, I was working through their videos because they make these videos about uh, public health related topics and they worked with like an outside video vendor and I was kind of like the, the in-between person. And there was a video that we were going to make that was that uh, is a re- was a remake of an older video, which involved like some pretty, n- nothing nude or, or sexually explicit, but like very intense kissing and, and touching. Um, so I suggested that, you know, maybe we should, maybe we, it'd be worth exploring the idea of bringing on an intimacy coordinator. Um, just because again, it's, it's, uh, you know, there's touch, two actors are touching each other. It doesn't have to be sexual. Um, just two actors are touching each other, let alone getting all up in each other's business. Um, so we asked the vendor about it. Um, and the vendor was run by this older actress. Maybe she was like in her forties or fifties and she shot it down, um, immediately. And she was like, ah, it doesn't, you don't need to worry about that. Um, which is interesting because she, again, she's a woman, right? So even women can be complicit in, in a system, um, she didn't say this, but it was almost like this vibe of like, you know, this older generation of, you know, it's just, it just comes with the territory, right? Um, like I suffered like, you know, that's just the way it is. Um, so when they shot down, I brought up 
you know, I explained why it would be valuable. And basically by that point, it was essentially an industry standard. Um, so I was kind of really trying to pitch it as like, you know, not only would this be good in a vacuum, but like, this is, this is not some fringe thing. Like this is becoming a, a normal part on film sets. Um, and there was a lot of drama at this company and I ended up getting laid off eventually. And this was brought up as one of the things that how dare I, you know, you know, uh, uh, what's the word kind of, um, contradict or challenge the video vendor because they know, they know more. Um, but again, and I think in the years since, since this happened, I've been proven more right every single day. Um, it, cause again, why, why would people be against this? It's again, it's not that people are actively against this. They just don't think it's necessary. Um, especially a lot of producers might be against it just because it's an extra crew member, right? So that's extra cost, um, extra salary, more, you need more food on set, you know, all this stuff. Um, but again, it's, it's really dumb because we already have a similar position for films. It's called a, fo- a fight choreographer, right? Fight scenes. Why do you have a fight choreographer? Um, you know, you have a fight choreographer to ensure no one gets hurt, right? If you take any of the language of people explaining why intimacy, intimacy coordinators are unnecessary and you replace intimacy with fight choreographers, that's ridiculous. Like imagine saying, oh, you know, we don't really need a fight choreographer. We're just going to let them go at it because that's more, that's more authentic. Are you insane? You, you could never do that, right? Because obviously you're not throwing punches in an intimate scene, but someone might have a trigger, right, that you don't know about. Um, you know, they don't want to be, they might be themselves a victim of sexual assault or harassment or violence even. So, you know, maybe touching them in a certain spot might uh, be a trigger and they know that, right? So if you, even just, you have these conversations uh, outlining, you know, where you're going to be touched. If you do want to have it a little more free form, again, you can kind of create some red lines figuratively. So, you know, it's like, don't touch me here, but you can squeeze this and poke that and all right but um like it would be insane if we if we treated fight choreography the same way we try to treat intimacy choreography right viviana commented here i think this is great because acting is such an open workspace so it often doesn't follow the same hr standards but it is still a workplace people should feel comfortable doing their job a hundred percent and that's what people forget um you know celebrity even if you're not a celebrity but celebrities too like this is a job this is a workplace so in so many HR best practices and standards are kind of thrown out the window because it's like, well, we're making art and we're doing this and you kind of have to follow different rules. And that's maybe true to a point, but no one should feel unsafe or uncomfortable at work. That's just, that's just, you know, full stop. Um, SAG has been rolling out guidelines and protocols and qualifications for, for this role. Um, you know, like, even though they're not officially part of the union, they have been putting out, I guess, like I said, like these guidelines kind of like how it should be done. Um, and the 2023 contract that the, the, that um, SAG won with the studios last year included a provision that allows a- actors to ask for an intimacy coordinator. Excuse me, an intimacy coordinator if they feel one is warranted. And the studio must consider the request in good faith and not retaliate. Um, you know, they can, the actor can't get in trouble for asking for for one. Um, and so official inclusion in the union would allow greater clarity and control over the process to ensure the actor's safety. Uh, something that's come up is, you know, the deadline notes that there was a kind of a quote, unquote controversy. I don't know if controversy is the right word, but kind of a, an issue where you had the intimacy coordinator for uh, the film Miller's Girl, which came out last year, publicly speaking about the process of being the intimacy coordinator on that film. It's talking about, you know, publicly speaking about this process that theoretically should have been confidential. She wasn't saying anything super, um, I don't know if it was he or she, but anyway, the intimacy coordinator wasn't saying anything super sensitive, but that you really shouldn't be talking about it at all. Um, I think the idea is. So if they were part of the union, then there would be a lot more kind of guardrails around something like that. Um, and I got a quote here from uh, SAG after a national executive director and chief negotiator, Duncan Crabtree, Ireland. That must be a, a, have to be a really big business card or really small font. Uh, I have a quote from him here saying, quote, intimacy coordinators are important partners to our members when they are working on some of the most vulnerable scenes possible. As part of our union, they'll have the strength of our 160,000 members standing behind them when they sit down to negotiate a deal that will bolster the foundation of this role create job opportunities, safely expand and ensure diversification of the talent pool and improve safety on set, end quote. And that's another thing is, you know, inclusion 
into the union would allow intimacy coordinators to collectively bargain with studios. Because right now they're kind of just all like these little, you know, it's kind of a one-to-one thing. Um, and I got a quote here from Marcy Leroff, who's an intimacy coordinator, saying, quote, we have no protections and we have no health insurance. We have no pension, end quote. Um, so, you know, I'm always, anyone who's followed the show, you know, I'm very pro-union. So I feel like every worker should be in a union, no matter how small or mundane. It's not about protecting you from physical safety or physical danger. Um, you know, workers should just have the right to be able to collectively bargain with their employers. Um, so I think this is a great move, if nothing else, because it reinforces the need and the standardness, the normalcy surrounding the, the role in, in Hollywood in the industry. Okay, let me grab a quick drink here. Wow, what an interesting story. I'm sure you have some thoughts about the topic, so comment below, let me know what you think. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really, really helps people find the channel and makes me feel all warm inside. Until next time, I'm Peter Mancuso. Peace out.